What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dron Eitner, a.k.a. Black One, back again with uh, some more morning motivation. This is morning motivation number three. Uh, I entitled this one, um, Grind Vigorous. I'll tell you why in a second. For those who don't know, um, morning motivation is a new short micro series where basically I wake up every morning and give a little tidbits about what I got going on for the day and maybe some insight on the industry and just, um, you know, words of wisdom that will help a person just reach new heights. Um, I'm trying to be a little bit quiet because it is a Saturday and my boo's sleeping. She's been working hard all week, so I'm trying to respect that. So if I seem a little quiet, I do apologize for that. Uh, okay, so, um, grind vigorous. <sighs> One of, uh, as we all know, for those who, um, have been in the loop and not living on the rock. We lost uh, the rapper known as Nipsey Hussle uh, about a month ago in a, uh, a fit of gang violence, um, gang-related violence, maybe, maybe not. Some people say it's conspiracies. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that he passed away. And uh, I was actually introduced to Nipsey Hussle when I was... Sorry, if I look over here, it's because I'm looking at the screen doing stuff. The, um, sorry, I was... Uh, Introduced to Nipsey Hussle through who I like to call my super twin, Charles Gambino. And um, <clears throat> basically, uh, there's a song that they have together that's on Charles Gambino's mixtape called Royalty, and it's called uh, Black Faces. I was aware of Nipsey Hussle before uh, this song, but I wouldn't, didn't really listen to his music wholeheartedly before then anyways so in that song he has a line that's stuck with me and still sticks with me to this day and it goes legend in my city because i grind so vigorous and when i heard that particular line i was like hmm that's me that is definitely me and what i mean by that is that like i garner a lot of respect in the city of tucson arizona um, a lot of this is because this is where I started my career as an artist, and I uh, cultivated a, a support system down there in the sense that I was constantly on, out in the scene doing stuff. I put together a showcase called Chronicles. Um, we don't really do Chronicles anymore, but we might bring it back. Who knows? But that's not the point. The point is that we did Chronicles for about 10 years, um, on and off for about 12, and we brought in over... I think we did 300 shows during that time and brought in countless acts from all over the country, from New York, California, Florida. Um, I think we even booked someone from Australia one time. Uh, we had a couple overseas acts. This is all, this is was done at, uh, at this point, six different venues in Tucson, from the now defunct Vaudeville Cabaret, Sports, uh, Club Congress, Delectables, um, Mr. Heads, Bar Passe, and Sharks. So at seven locations that we, that we took Chronicles to over the, over 10 years. Um, Chronicles also helped launch a lot of people's careers in the local scene. Um, some of the biggest legends in Tucson from you know the Marley Bees, Cass Lanskys, Lando Chills have all played Chronicles. And some of that was their first show or one of their first shows. We gave Marley B his first record release party at a Chronicle show at Club Congress, but the way the reason why I'm even bringing this up and what it, what it means to tie back into my original point is that the reason why I garner so much respect in Tucson is because of the fact that I constantly stay on my grind. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like me because I'm extremely opinionated, look like an asshole on social media, and also um, I'm very strong-willed, and that's a threat to a lot of people, but... I don't think that any of those people that don't like me don't respect me. The level of respect that I get in this state is pretty top tier. And a lot of that is because of the fact that I'm consistent, I am dedicated, and I am and I believe in follow through. And I believe in um, pushing yourself and never giving up. And despite all the opposition that I've had in my career, um, from people literally trying to fight me, I've had death threats, I've had people um, spread rumors about me, I've had people like uh, say things to my people and they have to get back to me, it's weird, you know what I'm saying, I have a lot of, a lot of people who don't like me, but like I said, those people who don't like me still respect me, 
and especially now I'm 14 13 years deep into this career uh, I've garnered thousands of views and streams sold plenty of CDs I've done over 500 shows in my career I have uh, worked with almost every single important entity in this state uh, in some way shape or form whether it's through show collabs music collabs uh, writing for them or about them on in Phoenix New Times or collaborating on other projects outside of music the point is is that going back to the whole grind vigorous thing if you want to gain respect you have to earn it as simple as that I think a lot of artists out here really believe that they can just go and put together really good music and put it out there and it'll resonate now this does happen but for me personally my understanding is is that you can have the dopest songs in the world but if you're not stepping up to the plate in other categories of your career it doesn't matter um, especially in 2019 where we as artists have to be able to do everything or at least be aware of everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you have to go and um, make your own flyers and get your CDs printed and uh, go and go out and get all your stuff in line. Well, I mean, you should. But what I'm saying is that I think a lot of artists believe that because of the fact that uh, record labels exist and that there's this whole engine and this illusion that... Um, when you get signed and it gets handed to you, which is which is true. If you sign a major label, you don't have to worry about anything on the back end. You don't really have to worry about shaking hands and kissing babies. You don't really have to worry about being in the street passing out flyers. You don't have to really be worried about um, networking and stuff like that. I mean, you still do, but you have a record label to take that take care of that for you. Um, that's kind of what I do a little bit for Starstruck with my artists, and spe spe specifically Lizzie Page and Vinnie Mendez, um, because of the fact that they don't they're just artists and while we are that's not going to be the end game <laughs> uh it's going it's definitely where we're at and so the idea is to evolve them into something more than just an artist and the only way you can do that is to stay on your grind grind vigorous um and that's all about consistency staying like if you if you go and you post a video and it does numbers like let's say you you, you put up a rap video and it does i don't know five thousand plays don't stop. I think a lot of people feel like they that that because they were successful on whatever they did that they can't that that they have that they can take a break. But really, that's when you double down. That's definitely when you double down. This is coming from experience. I think a lot of, a lot of reasons why I'm not further along in my career, relatively speaking, is the fact that I didn't double down on times when I should have. I would drop a project or I would drop something. It would go over very well. The, I get my little numbers, people go buy the album, whatever, stream it, I do my little thing, but then I don't do anything about that energy that I cultivated. I just kind of just let it dissipate, and then I have to start all over again. I realize that there's probably maybe four or five major opportunities in my life that I probably missed as a result of not staying on it. And if you've been watching what I've been doing with my label, especially in the, in the early months, and you're following me on Facebook, there's a phrase I used, which is uh, keeping the foot on the neck. That's what I was doing when I when I dropped Lizzie Page with Pink Lemonade. I knew that we were going to be going on this 10-show run. I knew that we were going to be doing this Pink Lemonade video. I knew that we were going to be um, basically establishing the brand. And the only way that we, were, we could, could do that is by constant flooding. Um, I think a lot of it is psychological for a lot of people because they don't want to annoy their friends and they don't want to piss off people who are their peers or people they look up to. They don't want to seem like they're spammy. Um, because, I mean, there's, there's a line there. I'm not saying that you should be all about people's inboxes sending your songs to everybody randomly. Um, you should do that. But if you do that, you should be targeting people. Don't just, like, go through your friends list and just send, send shit out to all of them because that's annoying and you will lose interest and engagement. But if you're taking the time to research who you're targeting when you do that, you'll have better results. It's also much better on Instagram than it is on Facebook. And what I mean by that is that if you want, um, let's say if you're a rapper and you need beats, go on Instagram, check out, uh, go to the hashtag search and search for, for beats. Search for hip-hop production. Search for things that are, that, that are related to what you're looking for. And then as you go and look at all these pages actually look at them like go into their account check out their first nine photos check out their uh their website if they have one and <clears throat> see if you can find something that will help you connect with them other than just their beats um 
or if there's a beat that you really resonate with, tell them that. Hit them in the DMs. Like, look, man, like, I heard your song on your, your Instagram page, and I really, I really like your sound. I'm wondering if there's a way that we can connect. Um, it doesn't even have to be monetary right now. Although, you know, money talks. If you want to get someone's attention in 2019 and people like me, money is the best way to do that. Now, I'm not saying that I'm this greedy money guy who always fucking won't care about the bag, but I got mouse to feed and my time is precious. So if you're in my inbox, we should be talking business. As simple as that. Unless you're a homie, then it's all good. Or we're just chatting about Avengers and shit. That's cool. But if you're in my inbox, we should be talking about business because that's where my mind state's at right now. And... Everybody who is an entrepreneur or a, uh, a musician or an artist should kind of be in that same realm if you want to grow and take your shit to new heights. Uh, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I think that's a lot of it, too. That goes back to the whole point of this video, grind vigorous. Grinding vigorous means um, relinquishing the fear of rejection. Uh, and I think that is probably the hardest thing to do as an artist is... Uh, Going into something though that you might, knowing that you might be rejected, it's 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 a deterrent. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to go, you don't want to go up to the plate and try and swing for a swing, knowing you're gonna miss. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you do that? It's all odds. <clears throat> it's all strategy. It's all taking the time to understand who you're trying to connect with and who you're trying to resonate with. And honestly, a lot of that's trial and error. And if you're not on your grind constantly, if you're not constantly on your vigorous grind. It's hard to really get that data necessary to know what works and doesn't work. Otherwise, you're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. So, where are we at time-wise? Boom. These videos are great. I love these. Because I'm able to speak my mind real quick. Keep trying to keep them until 10 to 15 minutes. No longer than that. If you have any questions, please hit me up. And I'll see you tomorrow for Morning Motivation 2. Or 4, sorry. We're on our way to Tucson to go shoot a music video for Jaka Zulu. So, we'll see you soon. And much love to everybody watching the video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and, uh, you know, spread the love. It's your boy, Jerron Eitner, a.k.a. Black One. We out this bitch.